No. Is there more? Is there more? What's going on, everybody? My name is Johnny, and welcome back to Midnight Evil. Why is this? Let me fix you guys. Let me fix you. Let me fix you, okay? You guys should not be like that. All right, there we go. Okay, all right, so we have to beat Midnight Evil. Ugh. We gotta beat Devotion. Ugh. All right, and I think there's another game that I've started and haven't completed, but that's whatever, all right? So let's just jump back into it. All right, we're gonna try to beat this and just let this one go. And I'm not messing around, all right? Not messing around out here. Chapter four. Colin wanted to tell his friends about the Urklings, but I begged him to keep it a secret. Oh my God, we're getting, we're, we're starting off so strong now. If anyone knew that my grandmother had passed down her druidic teachings, it would only take one person to scream witch and that would be good as dead. Oh my God. He agreed and kept my secret. Okay, well, listen, we're gonna do this stuff as just slow as possible. He agreed and kept my secret. Hello? He agreed and kept my secret. Freaking take it. I'm reading just fine. He agreed and kept my secret. Thank you. I'm speaking in... Listen, I'm a good reader, okay? It's not my fault. I mix a potion that would catch fire when touched by the in tiniest flame. Surely this would send it screaming to the underworld. Bada bing. He sat quietly in his bed and waited, knowing he must... Mustn't look them in the eye. Uh, okay, there. Where's more? Right there. Any more? Any more? Any more? Nope. He must let me attack, for this would be the only way to get close to it. Uh, what's that noise? Just after the stroke of midnight, he began to hear them chuckling and shuffling around in the dark. Stop. Clutching the potion bottle, hands trembling, he lowered his gaze and braced himself. Sure enough, one of them leapt from his bookshelf and sank its teeth into the flesh of his arm. Out of being, next page. Yes. He screamed and unstopped the bottle, emptying the contents over the green Urkling. No. Is there more? Is there more? Okay. It tore a tiny round chunk from his arm and, and gulped it down just as Colin shoved a candle right into its face. <laughs> okay. And it lit up like a torch and made a horrific high-pitched scream as it ran around the room trying to put itself out. I don't think we're good. We're good. No nothing's happening yet. The curtains caught fire as four more Urklings sprung out from their hiding places. Colin ran outside screaming and cradling his blood-soaked arm. <laughs> Stop with the freaking weird... Weirdness, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. His parents soon joined him outside in a panic trying to figure out what happened. I see you. You, you guys ain't scared me this time, so I know, I know what your little things are. Just then a tiny fireball came racing through the doorway and zigzagged towards the woods. I grabbed an empty glass jar from my help cupboard and ran after it. Uh, listen, I see you guys. You guys aren't nothing. Look, you guys are popping up. I ain't scared of you. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, you ain't nothing. Going to be in the doorway? Nothing. All right. The jar made a thunk sound as it landed over the flaming Urkling and the fire quickly went out. To my horror, the thing wasn't dead. It didn't even look like it was dying. <gasps> no, if I see you. Yeah, I knew you were gonna be there too. Right there. Mm-hmm. Gonzo's. Okay. It didn't even look it like it was dying. Oh my stop of the noise. It's fine. Don't block it from being set ablaze. It was just as spunky as ever. Listen, I'm not scared of you freaking people. Alright? Pop back up. You're fine. Nothing. Are there more of you? No. Okay. I quickly scooped up the jar and screwed the lid on. As I made it my way back, some of the villagers were trying to put out the fire inside the house, and others were tending to Colin's arm, telling him that it was, must have been a rat. I hear breathing. I've been I've never seen a rat quite like this. I shouted and held the jar up high so everyone could see. Okay. I don't get the significance of the heart beating. I don't get it. The instant they all looked in my direction, their jaws dropped, and Colin's face lit up for the first time since he'd lost his sister. Bada bing. Okay? He knew everyone finally saw that, and he had been telling the truth all along, and they all felt terribly ashamed for not believing him in the first place. Give me that. Right there. Right there. Right there. Is there more? Right there. Okay? You guys ain't- Listen, you guys ain't nothing! 
Unfortunately, the joy of this small victory was short-lived. For over the next three days, we tried every method we could think of to kill the little wretch. But no matter what horrific thing we did, it wouldn't die. Let's go, Billy. Chapter 4 is done. We're doing this. W-I-G-S-F-M 98.7 Game Talk. Let's go. Hello, darkness. Hi, old friend. I'm doing this every freaking time. I'm your host, Nick Gloom. In for Nate tonight, as we dive deep into game talk. Okay. Sorry about those technical issues we experienced last hour. I think Janet might have fallen asleep. For those of you that missed it, <clears throat> we were having an interesting discussion about game difficulty and learning curves. Uh -huh. You know, Nate likes dragons and dungeons, but <clears throat> apparently I'm dumb for thinking it's too difficult. Apparently, kids can play uh -huh. it. So what do I know? Nothing. Apparently. Nothing. Kind of like my work in progress, Evil Midnight. Evil which, Midnight! Which, as I mentioned earlier, if you weren't around, is going to be more of a horror game. Uh-huh. I'm not really sure, it. but I would imagine, in a game like that, confusing the player could be an evil tactic. Right. Something like grooming them up to expect one thing, yep. and then... Yank the rug out, so to speak. Uh huh. So, so is something gonna happen? Anyway, I'm rambling. I, it's sort of, the static starting to pick Hello, up. Hello, caller. You're on Game Talk. All right. That's a weird one. Hmm. Uh huh. Must have lost him. Right. Hello, caller. You're on Game Talk. Is that the, like the main one? I wonder. Very funny, guys. Caller, you're on Game Talk. What the? First, we tried drowning it. Hello? First, we tried drowning it. Thank you. There's blue ones now. We even had the priest bring us holy water when water from these from the well didn't work. Okay. Stop. And see. We cut off its head, but as soon as we sniffed its neck, the head grew a new body, and the body grew a new head. So it freaking doubled. Then we had two angry Urklings in jars. It was immune to every kind of poison that we knew of. It could heal quickly from any cuts it sustained. It could heal quickly from any cuts it sustained. Hello? Enough. Listen, I'm not scared of you people. I don't think you fully understand. You see me not messing around out here? I'm not messing around. We even tried squashing it flat, but it would just puff back up in a matter of a few minutes. Cause so I could be a- I should be a freaking teacher or something, you know? Ah! By this point, the Urklings had instead of every corner of the village. Parents had to stand guard over their sleeping treasure between the stroke of midnight and the first light of dawn, they became absolutely ravenous. It appeared that there were nothing else we could do, as much as I hated the thought of- <gasps> Oh my god, I see you. At least they're not freaking double. Okay, as much as I hated the thought of disturbing my grandmother, I knew that she was the only one that might be able to give me any insight of the two of uh, how I could get rid of them. Next page, let's go. Okay, red one. Red one right there. Red one right there again. Any more? Any more? I asked Colin to meet me in the secret of her grave. <gasps> I brought grandmother's old spirit board with me, which had every letter of the alphabet on it. Stop. I hear you. Go ahead and pop back up. I dare any of you people. Kyle and I placed a small glass cup inside, upside down in the center of the board and waited. The idea was that her spirit would guide the cup to the letters and in doing so, spell out a message for me. I said that was actually to me, but we'll take it. We're taking that to the bank here. Grandmother? I spoke aloud. I really need your help. Speak to us. Your magic is the only thing that could save these children. <clears throat> we waited, but we were met with only silence. Please, grandmother, I pleaded. I don't know what to do. I would do anything to save these children, anything. Just tell me what to do, please. I don't know what to do. I would do anything to save these children, anything. Just tell me what to do, please. I would do anything to save these children, anything. Just tell me what to do, please. Oh my god, the, loud, the noises are getting so loud. Just tell me what to do, please. I begged her to answer me, but the glass didn't move and no answer would come up from the spirit board that night. As we sn- I see you, stupid. Go ahead. 
As we snuck back to the village, we were greeted with the news of three more deaths. Next page. Okay. The widow Autumn had fallen asleep guarding her three little ones. <laughs> she always worked so hard, toiling in the fields from dawn until dusk to make sure her family was fed. After, the, after she lost her husband to sickness, she was the only one caretaker for her children. Gosh, now they were gone too and she was truly alone. Okay. As I lay in my bed crying, I felt responsible for what has happening. I hadn't paid much attention to as a child when my grandmother tried to teach me the old ways. Oh my, stop making noises, seriously. If I could have been a better student, I could have prepared my, my people so much misery and death. So I'm not afraid of you freaking things now, okay? You guys ain't nothing. Eventually, I drifted off to sleep. It was the only thing that my grandmother finally came to me in a dream and told me what I must do if I wanted to rid the village of the Urklings once and for all. Okay, but their imprisonment would come at a terrible price. Your life, I bet. I bet it's your life. What's happening? Let me... Hello? Chapter 6. I found myself walking through the dark forest. The damp earth under my bare feet felt cool and mossy. In the distance, I could hear drums. A bright light was shining through the trees. I continued cautiously. I was unsure what to expect when I entered the clearing. A bright light was shining through the trees. I continued cautiously, unsure of what to expect when I entered the clearing. I continued cautiously, unsure of what to expect when I entered the clearing. As I came closer, I could see people dancing around the fire. A beautiful woman stood with her hands outstretched towards the sky. It... Okay, okay, okay. I forgot this came stupid. It took a moment before I recognized her. It took a moment before I recognized her. Give it to me. Give it to me, game. Grandmother, is that you? Oh. Man, we're starting this shit off strong. I thought there was another one to my right, so I stopped. Give me that back. Run, run, run that back up. All right, we're back where we got it. Or started. Hello, dear. I heard you. Your okay. One more time. All right. Can't talk. Okay. Huh? Hello, dear. I heard your call, but I could not come to you. Stop that. I had to wait until you fell asleep to bring you here. I got you, coach. You ain't- you- listen. You ain't- you guys ain't nothing out here. What is this place? I asked, looking around. This is where all of our people go with- when their time on Earth ends. Can I stay here with you? You shut up, alright? You escape is even that scary, bro. No, my darling, I am afraid you can't. No, my darling, I'm afraid you can't. Uh, I could see the sorrow in her eyes as she put a sympathetic hand on my cheek. Bada bing, baby, let's freaking turn that page for me. In fact, if you really mean to imprison- Oh my god, stop with the heart attacks, okay? You're fine, you're fine. In fact, if you really mean to imprison all the Urklings, you will never be allowed to take your place here. Gotcha, bada bing. Uh-huh. Out of here, dude. You ain't going nowhere. There's another one? They just, they just like, they just pop up out of nowhere, bro. My heart sank like a stone. What do you mean? Stop. If you wish to trap them, your moral soul will be lost forever. Do you understand? Stop with the noises. Do you understand? Do you understand? Thank you. Gosh. I bit my lip as I thought of Maggie, Jacob, and the three Adam children. Get out of here, stupid. Freaking ugly. You're ugly. I couldn't even imagine the horror they must have felt during their final moments. I couldn't even imagine the horror they must have felt during their final moments. Give that to me, coach. Then I picture Colin and the other children of the village. Give me that one. Stop. Just that one? Okay, good. I simply couldn't bear to let the Earthlings pick them off one by one. Freaking jerks. You guys ain't doing nothing to me. Sumiko would have no children left. 
Soon we would have no children left. I couldn't let that happen, no matter the cost. Tell me what I must do. Okay. My grandmother's expression grew dark as she describes the ingredients to two potions. Yeah, that one. Any more? Okay. Then she explained the details of the spell I would have to perform to trap them within a cursed tome forever. Next page. God, there's so many pages. All right. No more? Okay. As she said, then a horrible chill spread through my entire body. That's so fuck. Listen. Okay, you guys, you guys only see the stuff that I actually get right. I'm, I'm reading this stuff fine. It's the stupid game that doesn't understand what I'm saying. As she spoke, I could feel my blood run cold and a horrible chill spread through my entire body. Give that to me, okay? I'm over here pissed off. My throat became so dry that I could hardly speak. <laughs> I can't. I managed to say. Stop it. So we're gonna, put, we're gonna put this thing right here, okay? Right here. Give it to me. No, I can't do this. Give that to me. Get away from me. Get away from me. Yeah. Any, any more? Okay. I stumbled backwards, feeling sick to my stomach. You must, if you don't finish every step exactly as like I say, that the Urklings will never stop. Okay. I fell to my knees and put my hands over my face. Please, there must be another way. Okay. I don't make the rules, my dear. I can only tell you the way things are. I can only tell you the, th the way things are. I sobbed pitifully, and my grandmother knelt down, putting her hand, her arms around me and holding me close. Stop. Okay. The right thing to do is really the easiest. Be strong. <laughs> No, 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 okay. She whispered as I woke, be strong. Listen, we're doing this every time. As soon as I opened my eyes, I began to question the dream. Oh. My. Gosh. Did my grandmother's spirit really visit me, or was it just my anxious mind playing tricks on me? Okay. In my heart, I knew. Leave me alone. Give it to me. Is there any more? Okay. I had to cast this spell. I had to save them. Bada bing, baby, let's go. Atori, computer video systems. Chapter 6 is completed, son. Get that lighting strike in there. Because I know I'm coming. I know I'm coming for sure. Alright. Chapter 7. Alright, here we go. I feel like this is probably going to be a long one. Okay. Chapter 7. I searched Hogan's forest for the various herbs I would need to brew two potions. Hello? I searched Hogan's forest for the various herbs I would need to brew two potions. Okay. I smelled the sweet perfume of the forest air and listened to the songs of the birds and insects of the woods, knowing that it would be the last time I would ever get to enjoy them. Oh my god, I'm, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I could probably read the rest of my life and be good. Once I get... Probably not. I can't, I can't read now. I said it and it went away. Once I gathered all my ingredients, I found Colin and told him that I knew how to end the Urkling's reign of darkness, but that I would need his help. Really? That was... That was good, dude. I didn't tell him what was about to happen. I couldn't find the courage. Go ahead and pop back up. I dare you. Not to mention, if he knew what I was about to do, he would do everything in his power to stop me. Okay. He was a good boy. Those red ones, they're, they're kind of jerks. Go ahead and pop back up. Is that it? Good. I never had the privilege of having children of my own, but if I had, I would have wanted them to be just like Colin O'Brien. Brave, honest, and kind. Okay. Things are starting to get a little poppy off of you. Let's go. Together, we walked into the deepest part of Hogan's forest. The old, the old stone ruins marked a sacred place where our ancestors used to honor the ancient woodland spirits. 
Next page. Give it to me. Okay. Twelve large rectangular stones stood in a massive circle. Oh my god. I sat my pack down and opened it up. Taking out this very book, I opened it to the first page and laid it in the center of the circle. Next, I took out the two potions, one black and one white. I gave Colin the small bottle that held the black liquid. You will need to drink this. It will protect you. Hello? It will protect you. Thank you. Okay. He frowned for a moment as he inspected the murky potion, but obediently pulled the stopper out of the bottle and drank it down. Ugh, that was awful. I smiled well. I didn't plan on making you drink it again. Well, I don't plan on making- I smiled. Well, I don't plan on making you drink it again. I took the white potion and drank it, trying to think about the fact that it was sealing my fate. Oh my god. We're starting to get a little bit crazy now. Open that window back up, I dare you. Okay. Something doesn't feel right, Colin started wobbling. Uh, I'm sorry, my boy. I said sincerely. Truly, I am. Okay, everything's fine. You're fine. You're freaking out over nothing. His eyes rolled back, and he fell into a deep, dreamless sleep. When he woke, he found himself bound with rope and blindfolded. Give that to me. The black potion you see had three functions. It was infused with herbs that would make him first and foremost irresistible to every Urkling within a hundred miles. Secondly, it contained the binding agent that would ensure the creatures and keep them forever trapped in a pocket dimension that could only be opened by using this cursed book. Yeah, it's me, baby. Thirdly, it incapacitated him long enough for me to finish the remaining st steps of the spell. Ah! <clears throat> you see, while he was unconscious, I was writing this book. Come on, I know this is starting to get crazy. As I pen these final words, I can already see my skin turning white. My hair was mostly falling out, and the long blue hair is growing in. <clears throat> At first, I thought Colin was getting bigger. But I see how- I see now that I'm slowly shrinking. Okay. My vision is fading. I can hear the others coming. Last page, guys. Last page, and we freaking finish this once and for all. I keep telling Colin not to be afraid, that it will be all over soon. You're fine. Everything's fine. Just take it slow. Nice and slow. After we eat him, we will all be trapped in the book. His screams will be the last thing I hear. Anything else? Anything else? Please forgive me, for I can never forgive myself. Let's go, baby. Last chapter, hopefully? I think it is. Uh oh. What's happening? A sudden rose and William Grinkle was safe. Okay. He ran to the attic to lock the book up for good. Okay. Well, don't put it in the attic because someone's going to get it. The chest was gone. They so ran to the yard and buried it. Once Dunny turned and saw a page on the ground. There's one more page? He cautiously approached it. There's blank. Looks, there's like nothing on it. The page was empty. Okay. Midnight Evil, created by Nathan Sanders. 
right, everybody, this was the end of Midnight Evil. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you guys do the YouTube thing, like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. As always, guys, my name is Johnny, and I'll see you guys in the next video.